that's all the boats that are kicking around here. They're made out of teki and tong. That's what the planking's getting done by. What type of rope is this? We need to fiberglass inside. Well, this year did not start out as we had planned. Is there any way we could seal that? Our home Nanji ended up on the reef due to a mooring failing from a heavy squall in the night. Fuck. We got Nanji safely back to the boatyard where we have been busy completing repairs to get Nanji sailing again oh. soon. It's got to get worse to get better. We had planned to begin our Indian Ocean crossing and departing from Thailand across to Sri Lanka at this time. But with the damage sustained to Nanji, the first signs of the COVID crisis beginning and our limited visas to remain in Thailand to complete repairs was head down, bums up with long days of boat work. Get him! I had already grinded back the outside of the hull and exposed the damaged areas. Oh. That's so brutal. With two massive holes in the side of our boat, I changed tasks and focused all my energy into building a new rudder for Nanji. So I employed a local contractor to complete the replanking of the hull. That's good. We've just had a good old yarn to the contractor here, and uh, he's going to give us his best tie worker tomorrow, who's really fast, really good at woodwork, he says. So that's really good. And we've had a bit of a look at the holes here. Um, yeah, he's happy with the one that I've cut out over there. He reckons that's all fine. We should be able to join that up full sweet. Uh, this, this other hole here, I'll just have to make it bigger so I, we get underneath the, the structural beam here, underneath the stringer, so it's much easier to fit the bits of wood and have them in there rather than butting up to an edge like this. So I've just got to, I'll cut this back again, pretty much. And yeah, sweet. Look forward to getting started on it. The day just got even better. The guys are here and they're fitting the wood pieces and um, cutting them up to replace the planking that was damaged. So, progress. Absolute progress. <laughs> Nanji's built out of red cedar, but red cedar is not a common wood in Thailand. And so the lads, the planking, they got all the long boats, all the boats that are kicking around here, they're made out of teki and tung, which is a local wood. It's very strong, very tough. It's a hardwood, no oils, no knots hidden knots inside, so good strong wood. That's what the planking's getting done by. My carpentry is not the best and Thailand is known for skilled tradesmen in woodwork. As I had my hands full building the rudder, I trusted the lad's skills to complete the job. The guys extended the inside stringers so all the butt ends of each plank would be screwed into the stringers, including the end of the existing planks. Mm. I thought it may be completed a little differently, but sometimes you have to run with the assistance you have, especially in a foreign country. As I'll be fiberglassing in and out, I was confident the work done would be sufficient. The lads took their time and measured precisely each plank, and after two days, the holes were filled. Let's see how the boys are doing. To fill the seams between the planks, I was surprised to see them tapping in a thread to use as a corking. What type of rope is this? Sim <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah same, same same. Yeah. Yeah. Same. yeah. Good inverter. And it's Ooh. swell, Ooh. hey. Yeah. yeah. Good inverter. Yep. Yeah. yeah, expand. Ooh. Right, right, right. This thread is cotton and it is an old traditional way of building wooden boats. When the cotton is wet, it expands and feels the seam. On Nanji, however, it won't ever get wet as an epoxy filler is laid around the planks and then fiberglass both sides. The wooden planks are the core of the boat and with the amount of fiberglass I plan to lay, I'm happy she'll be solid again and more stronger than any production boat will ever be. Beautiful, beautiful man. So I've been sorting out the rudder, the boys are just finishing up plugging in those holes. This gear here is Harford's gear, it's like epoxy, this one's a filler, this one's like a wood glue. But like, uncle got us onto it and he swears by it and a boat builder swears by it, they gave it to uncle, they got him cotton onto it. And I said, I wanted to watch the boys to see what they were doing. And I wanted to, so I bought heaps of that gear so to fill in these holes. What do you know? The boys are all over it. Using the exact same gear. They're full of filler. So that's all like the filler over the top of the wood. That's just kind of to build it up because it was, uh, there's the void from the fiberglass that's been ground back. So there's the wood, then there's the filler to bring up the height. And then we can glass on top of that. So the lads are finished plugging up the holes on the outside. So they've cut their wood and they epoxied them in and screwed them into the hull and then they 
done the, that rope corking sort of thing and then they on the outside they've done the whole lot over with filler uh, and so the whole area is watertight from the outside I'll have to sand that tomorrow then we can start glassing it but on the inside there's still the top cracks from between the corking and inside of the hull and so yeah I'm just going to go over it all on the inside here with some epoxy wood glue it's good gap filler sort of stuff this stuff so It'll glue in all the back of the wood and all the planks. Uh, we put a couple of little extra little rib bits sort of deal that uh, they could screw into to help hold them in there. Um, so yeah, I just got to tidy all that up. Now that the rudder is glued together, um, it's setting outside so we've come inside to start on another job. We need to fiberglass inside. The planking's been done, we need a fiberglass on the inside and fiberglass on the outside. So we're just preparing the build for that. So I've done all the filler in all the joins on the inside here so there's just the corking they put the uh, epoxy glue and then they fill it over the top on the outside but on the inside you can, you can still see open cracks that went through to the corking so I filled that up with wood glue like with wood epoxy and I think I'll just sand it all back and make it nice and smooth and then I'm gonna have to put some filler so it's kind of like some fillers on the inside edges so it's not a 90 degree. Uh, I want to use the 800 in here. Yeah, we want to be able to fold it, so I'll have to put a bit of a filler on the inside here. But I'll, I'll sand it all back first, and then, I'll, then we'll go over and do all the filler. Uh, so maybe we'll mix up some filler. I had already cut to size the 800 gram biaxial fiberglass cloth to fit this patch, and then went ahead quickly laying the filler in the corners for the cloth to bend. Before the filler kicks off, I wet out the cloth and coat the area to be glassed with epoxy. It is important to make sure all the cloth is thoroughly soaked with epoxy to achieve good adhesion and strength. The epoxy will drain out from the cloth in elevated areas, so I continually apply more epoxy to these areas until it starts to set. It's then a process of massaging the cloth down and ensuring no air bubbles get caught under the fresh piece of fiberglass. Massage! Always a bit of a mad rush, trying to fiberglass especially when it's hot and you're doing lots of little fiddly bits. I put down a wet filler to use as like a little filler on the inside where it's a right angle and it worked really good yep. up there to make a bit of a curve so you put wet on wet so then it's kind of hot boxes it and all goes off together and sets together. Um, but yeah, that worked really good. We do that because by axle, the type of fiberglass as it is, it doesn't like to curve. So uh, we needed it to go in like a 90 degree shape and it doesn't like to do that. So if you put like a little bit of filler in there and you make it a nice smooth round edge and then it, then it can slope on upwards. But yeah, it doesn't like to do these ones. Yeah, but I was working a bit too slow. Even though I was in a mad rush, I was working a bit slow and the rest of the filler that I had for a couple of spots down here, it's kind of kicked off already. I've been living in masks for the last week and it's not because of coronavirus. Uh-uh. No, sir. With the four affected bilge compartments all puttied, filled and fibreglassed, it is back on the grinder and prepare the outside of the hull ready to lay the new layers of glass. So all the filler that was in here, that's just to raise it all up to make bring it back to the same height as the fibreglass because it was just straight wood, so... I'm just taking all that epoxy filler back to make it a nice smooth surface so it's just all one layer so there's no little indents or anything like that so there's no little bubbles where the epoxy can go under when uh, when we lay glass on top so I'll make it all smooth back to one thing and before we glass I'll scratch it up again with like 40 grit just give it a hand sand so it's, then it's all scratched and the epoxy's got something to set to but first we just got to make it flat so it's the same shape as Nanji this one here, I need to build it up on the inside here, so uh, I might just sand this corner here and then we can put off a big bit of glass there and then yeah, then we can glass that afterwards have to decide whether we're going to put glass this two sheets that way and that way whether we do it in three patches like this uh, I'm not too sure yet, I'll make up my mind once everything's ready to glass